All right, now I'm going to show you uh, those four basic cuts with simple side stepping. Simple side stepping means that you're uh, turning in place, rotating with your spine as the center of the axis. Um, and it's used for power generation. It doesn't get you off the line of attack. A long side step would do that. But I like to start this um, warm up with a set of simple side stepping in double force. And this I find especially important in the learning through comparisons concept in that you're dealing with different weapons, especially if it's a weapon you're not used to, you wanna have that left hand on the right wrist or on the longer handle of the longer weapons uh, for more control. Uh, it gives you more speed in a fight, you know, a, a a weapon, let's say, that weighs a pound and a half. Swinging with one arm, you have less control and less speed to move it abruptly at speed than you would if you have two hands on it and both hands generating force. In this case, what's important is both hands are helping to control the weapon. I, I know a couple of people, many decades in filthy martial arts, they switch over to another weapon. They used to straight blades, they go to kukri, they swing, and they stop the blade where it would not touch their left hand with a straight blade and they end up nicking themselves with the gukri. Or another guy was practicing, you know, demonstrating with his left hand, he's right-handed, overswung on a target and cut his uh, right hand. And this is with a blade he's used to, but he's obviously he's a right-hander, his left hand is not as good. So um, it's a good place to start, even though you lose some reach with double force, have the warm-up start with double force because it gives you control. So. With a Bowie knife, what you're worried about on these four diagonal cuts is where is that point, right? You swing a stick in Philippine martial arts and, and very often you come and you'll, you'll touch your left arm in some way, right? With the uh, back of the stick. But if you do that with a, a Bowie knife, either a sharpened swedge or that point may end up popping you in the left shoulder. So that's why I like to uh, start with double force. So real simple, I'll back up so you can see the footwork from guard, which is uh, one of my guards has, it's kind of like a, a low ready on handgun. Elbows are close to the ribs. Both hands are out in front of you. The tip is just below eye level, so it doesn't interfere with my vision at all. And I can see what's going on. So you simple side step, you come up and cut one. The point is pointed at the opponent. The blade is just outside the outline of my body, so I'm blocking a weapon. It's blocked outside the line of my body. Two, same idea here. My elbows are close to my ribs, so I don't overextend. I still have that point uh, pointed towards the opponent, and I'm less likely to, to have a problem going out of bounds, easier and faster to recover. Three, uppercut to here. Go just above your eye line so the blade does not interfere with your vision. Um, still trying to point towards the opponent. And four, same idea. This side, you're pointing towards the opponent. The blade is above your eye line, so you don't interfere with your eyesight. Also with these, all of these gives you the opportunity to do a secondary um, thrust after the cut. So a good place to start. Let me show you on the other weapons. Okay, here we are with the Kukri. Again, you'll draw, I like this little ready as our start position, uh, especially with the heavy, heavier tools. It gives you more control and you're aware of where that blade is at all times. One, because you have your left hand on your wrist. The other is because that blade is in your visual field. It's up above your head, let's say. Uh, it's out of your visual field and you have less feedback of where it is. So I like to start to walk with the blade here. Uh, I feel it's a little safer, especially if you're transitioning for, to a weapon that you're not familiar with, you didn't grow up with. So let's try this four diagonal cuts from a simple side step. So anyway, simple side step, come up in one. And this time, the, the palm, my thumb, it's the line of my fist is the same placement as on the Bowie knife. That's pointed still straight at the opponent, but because of the curvature of the Kukri, it's off on the side. Because a kukri is a, a cut or hack centric weapon, not a thrust centric weapon like the buoy, my secondary cuts from here will be cuts as opposed to thrusts. 
So, anyway, one, two, three, four, back to guard. I notice when I come back to guard, I'm turning with the cutting edge, I'm not placing with the flat. So you saw in the Kukri, uh, because it's single edged and it's curving away from me, I can get away with, if I want to, I could touch my shoulder, index off my left shoulder for a backhand cut. And you can do that if that's the only tool you will ever use, you grew up with it, and that's all you're gonna have on you as an edge weapon, that's fine. If you're gonna possibly use different weapons, then you kind of want to keep that safety factor throughout all of them. Now, especially uh, there's a Volpace training um, tactical tomahawk model. Uh, there's a, on the actual uh, tactical tomahawk I have, there's a spike here for glass breaking. So you could see how, you know, you swing this and you come back up. You don't want to pop that uh, spike into your shoulder. It's kind of, so you're, you're, if I just move my arms, the limiter, on a forehand is my form or my elbow touching my body and it can't go obviously through my body, right? The limiter on a backhand is the end of reach with my left hand. If I'm keeping my elbows in, you know, pretty close contact of my ribs. So I'm pretty much staying within the range of motion, you know, with, if my hands are connected as I do that. And that's why I like to do this uh, with double force because it's safer for beginners. Now, when we go to a heavier uh, axe, I have a hatchet that uh, I think the head on is like two pounds, pretty heavy. Um, it's that condor, I think it's called the Greenland pattern. Uh, that's pretty heavy. So if training with this, this is a cold steel uh, axe gang trainer, this is heavy plastic, very thick. This probably comes closest to, you know, a real weight um, uh, training tool, plastic training tool compared to steel. Still not as heavy as the real thing though. So here I'm not trying to stop uh, at the end of a cut. It's that head is all the mass is way out here. It's gonna be hard to do, it's hard on your wrist. So in this case, I will come and let it flow back up. So there's my one and two. Now when I do three and fours with axes, I don't like uppercuts. Unless you got a, you know, five foot long uh, Dane axe with a one foot cutting edge, uh, I'd rather not do uppercuts. So our three and four with axes in, in my learning through comparisons course is horizontals. And if I had an overhead shot, <laughs> I could show you this. It's actually not a true half circle here. It comes and then the momentum drags the hammerhead or the axe head back a bit and that's where I get stoppage. That's how I stop and slow down, down momentum without just doing muscular force on it. I kind of let the, the, the force dissipate by moving backwards. Then I have that left hand and the pectoral muscle involved to help slow it down and not stopping on a dime but simply slow and decelerate under control and I, I have less of a tendency to, to bop myself in the head with this. You know, even this plastic thing, you do not want to get hit in the head, you know, on the side of the head, temple, anything delicate like that with one of these things. So here's how I'll use a ax that's heavier uh, with a very heavy head and you don't have the capacity to easily stop it in midair. Fluid one and two, fluid three and four horizontal. So diagonal one and two, horizontal on three and four. And there's that feeling of momentum carrying it back to stop the force uh, and dissipate the force on the horizontals. Where the, the diagonals, you have gravity, you know, it falls down. And then once you've complete the cut, it turns and carries up and gravity rising up. Plus your left hand being here helps dissipate the force and slow it down. Then you have to come back onto that side and you're back on a chamber on this side of the body. Let me show you on a tomahawk. This is a axe head cane from Cold Steel. That's normally about hip height on me. I cut it down so it has a 22 inch handle, the same as my uh, camping tomahawks, like my trail hawk. So from here, I'll go one and two, those diagonals, and then three and four there. So I get the same idea. And now, because I can put two hands on the handle, 
I do, and I get much more control. Because this is a long handle, I know where it is. I can index off my shoulder with this. I'm a little more comfortable doing that than the one-handed tools um, because I have a lot of control with that back and forth motion of the right and left hand. So I will, with a two-handed weapon, allow it to touch my shoulder, but it's not impacting my shoulder. It's just decelerating and just to the point of almost stopped, I'll let it touch my shoulder simply so I have indexing and I can, I can have better accuracy. Uh, as I explained in other videos, you can you get distance to a target by focusing with binocular vision. If you can add other parts of your anatomy to that mix, for instance, the pommel in your visual field, your brain calculates, okay, pommel to target. And then if you're touching another part of your body, in this case, the left shoulder, okay, left shoulder to target. So you get four points of visual indicators or, or tactile indicators uh, to the target. It makes it a little more accurate. So that's an idea with these different tools um, showing you just with simple sidestepping in the learning through comparison.